well short of already lowered Obamacare expectations, yet the White House is now claiming a sign-up surge ahead of the March 31st deadline. But what they neglect to say is how many have actually paid their premiums. What we do know is that the White House has repeatedly changed the Obamacare rules to serve political needs, and that's why one GOP leader is calling for an independent Obamacare watchdog. We welcome back another old friend of the show, House Republican Chief Deputy Whip Peter Roskam from uh, Illinois. Peter, wonderful stuff. Now, let me get this right. Peter, they had a, years ago they had a TARP, a special TARP IG, who actually did a lot of good in his reports. Is this that you're calling for something like that? Exactly. So it's like the TARP IG. It's also like the Afghanistan IG, the Iraq Reconstruction IG. And the concept is a very simple one. Follow the money and give an independent oversight agent, that is a special inspector general, the capacity to go across all these jurisdictional lines. Because here's the limitations right now. The Health and Human Services Inspector General can only ask HHS questions. Treasury can only ask Treasury questions. And there's a, you know, there's dozens of agencies that are involved in Obamacare, and no one single entity has the capacity to ask all the questions. This will be a money saver. You know, I think uh, also it may be a process helper, because as I remember, in the TARP sense, the Special Inspector General really took a look at who was helping whom and when and who was doing what and who showed up at meetings. And that was extremely helpful because it was such a complex process. This is even more complex. So, for example, all these changes just in recent months, there's so many changes. I dare say very few people can keep track of this. Look, you don't know if you're a foot or horseback half the time on Obamacare. And not only is it complicated, it is huge. So if you look at TARP, which was, um, you know, a very, very big spending problem of $800 billion, Obamacare is a trillion eight in terms of spending over the 10-year the, the budget window. So it all begs the question, which is, who's watching this whole scene? And the answer is, nobody is watching the whole scene in totality. And here's the reality. The reality, Larry, is that the administration has so wedded itself to Obamacare, a signature piece of legislation for the president, that they don't have that dispassionate interest in trying to get to the bottom of things. They are really interested in covering up and patching through and coming up with a whole hodgepodge approach. And the net result is it's the American, it's, it's individual citizens and individual well, businesses that are really suffering. You know, I think that, um, I think what President Obama has essentially done is doomed the individual mandate. I think now he's got a three-year, he's got a three-year moratorium. It's something I called for for the entire thing. Um, he's going to extend the March 31st deadline. We know that. Uh, it may be that anybody that has, uh, you know, suffers any quote-unquote hardship won't have to sign up. And the individual mandate was supposed to be the center of this thing. That was the Supreme Court decision. I think it's dead. And therefore, I, I think Obamacare is dead. I think Obamacare is a house of cards that is collapsing as it's being built. The trouble is that as it's being built and as it's collapsing at the same time, it's injuring people and it's having an adverse impact in the economy. And you cannot get straight answers from this administration, which is why you need an independent oversight organization or a special inspector general that just has the breadth and capacity to get and cut through all the nonsense and go from one department to the other department to put all the pieces together to find out what's what. All right, let me read you um, election year stuff, okay? Politico is out tonight. GOP health plan could be road to nowhere. And they're basically seeing that the Republicans can't get it together. They're not even going to have a vote in the House. Uh, yes, Mr. McCarthy is trying to uh, develop something. Ultimately, Majority Leader Eric Cantor is responsible, but it's not happening and therefore won't be a force in this election. What say you? Well, I think that there's going to be an alternative health care element debated. During the debate on Obamacare, Dave Camp offered the substitute that got shunned away. Nancy Pelosi wouldn't even allow us to have a debate on the House floor during the original Obamacare debate. So, look, there, we're, we have an embarrassment of riches right now on the Republican side and on the conservative side on thoughtful alternatives to Obamacare that go after things to lower cost and fund high-risk pools and deal 
deal with pre-existing conditions. And when you collapse the debate back and look at the opportunity that President Obama had, he has squandered the opportunity because there was national consensus on cost and national consensus on pre-existing conditions. And rather than focusing in on those two things, he went for this big, massive plan, which is now they've overpromised and underdelivered, and that's the worst place to be. Just the last one, uh, uh, Peter. Is it, in your judgment, a political question, politically, is it better to have a unified Republican plan, or is it just better to wait until 2016 and just hammer away in the next six months on Obamacare? Which do you think they're is not, better? They're not mutually exclusive. So I say hammer away, and the contrast is very, very clear. But I do think that there is a big political advantage in terms of offering the alternative. This is the vision. And how you move forward. They're not mutually exclusive. I think you can do both, and I think we will do both. All right. Many thanks. Great friend, Congressman Peter Ruskin. We appreciate it very Thank much. You, Larry.